Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Katie McCullough. She is a DVM candidate at North Carolina State University. Thanks for joining us, Katie. Thank you for having me. Now, the poultry industry is under a lot of pressure to reduce the load of salmonella that is going from live production into processing. Um, you've zeroed in on one particular area, the hatchery box. Mm -hmm. Why the focus on hatchery boxes? Well, the hatchery is really the hub of live production, uh, is how I like to think of it. So all of your breeder flocks are sending their eggs to the hatchery, and then those chicks hatching out are being disseminated out through the entire complex for that area. So any disease measures that you can get under control at the hatchery are really going to have the biggest impact for that complex. And I visited a lot of hatcheries in my day, and it always seems like sanitation is, is paramount. I mean, you, they've got the pressure washers and the disinfectants and so forth, um, but they've really had to up their game ever since they took the antibiotic out of the hatchery. Right, uh, so cleaning and disinfection is um, a key part of disease control, and with the removal of antibiotics, that was one of our tools that we used uh, to keep disease at bay, and with the loss of that, um, we're just having to build up those other barriers to keep disease out. So cleaning and disinfection is one for sure. So let's get back to the hatchery boxes. Was there something in particular that prompted your interest in this one element of the hatchery? Well, at the hatchery, the, the project was located. The hatchery was under uh, time constraints, basically, in that they hatch four days a week and the washing of the boxes occurred over the Wednesdays, which was an off day, and over the weekends, which was another off day. Um, but between the Monday, Tuesday of hatching and then the Thursday, Friday, that was just an overnight, mm -hmm. and there wasn't sufficient time to wash and allow those boxes to dry by the time that chicks were processed the next morning. So there wasn't enough time yeah. to dry. So the compromise there was that we used dirty boxes but had them dry overnight. So we're putting chicks into those boxes that were dry. But where there's dirt, there's bacteria. Where there's moisture, there's bacteria. I mean, right. this sounds like it, it would have been pretty obvious. Well, we were hoping that by allowing those boxes to dry completely that the transmission cycle might be decreased enough that the risk might also be decreased. So now you did a study could you walk us through exactly what you did and what you found? Sure. Uh, so on the first day, coming off of having um, clean boxes over the weekend, we put um, chicks into those clean boxes and I sampled them before chicks went in. And then when they came back the next day, I sampled those boxes again, now as dirty boxes that had been allowed to dry. And when you say you sampled them, what exactly did you do? Uh, we used swab the boot swabs that are enriched with milk and, um, and just wipe down the insides of those boxes to try to capture everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so after um, sampling those boxes I also sampled at the same time the flocks that were placed in on Mondays and sampled those by using chick papers that were placed in the bottom of other boxes of the same flock just to see the prevalence of salmonella that we had in our environment going into the boxes. And so what did you come away with? So on our Tuesday sampling, we discovered salmonella in one of our groups out of 10. And of those groups, um, salmonella positive flocks had been placed into seven. So overall, we found salmonella in one group out of seven of positively placed flocks. So that's about a 14% incidence of recovery. And did that number surprise you? It was surprising actually because you would expect that if you place salmonella positive flocks in boxes that the next day you would be able to recover salmonella out of all of those boxes and we felt that the recovery rate was lower than expected. So what's the takeaway message then? I mean is it okay then to leave some dirt in the boxes? <laughs> So um, each hatchery is different and under different constraints. And while I would not say that you should ignore cleaning and disinfection, the purpose of this study was really to focus 
where we need to uh, put our efforts the most. And in this case, uh, I think that we are able to focus our efforts on maybe some other areas of the hatchery that need more time or more um, support and maybe we can allow this particular section to just keep an eye on it um, and not necessarily take action until it's indicated that it's needed. Well, that tees up the ball nicely for my next question because you obviously spent a lot of time in the hatchery while you were doing this study. Uh, you seem like a pretty uh, astute and aware person. I mean, what other things did you see in the hatchery that, that you feel maybe the poultry industry could be doing a little bit better? So one thing that, uh, it goes back to the other barriers to disease. It's always important that we have good chick quality so uh, when those navels are healed up and we're not allowing entry into the body cavity by um, having those open navels, that's the very first barrier that the chick itself has to disease entry, um, as well as just boosting that chick's immunity and just its internal defenses by um, having a good vaccine program for our breeders and they're passing along that maternal protection. So that really gives the chicks kind of a a head start on um, being able to fight off by using those maternal protection antibodies. And then also just really great biosecurity, just keeping the disease from even entering the premises. So you want to keep your environment clean. Um, you don't want it in there in the first place. Of course, you can use cleaning and disinfection to get it out once it's there, but really uh, we want to keep our uh, premises clean. And what were some um, breakdowns in biosecurity that you saw? So I can't speak to specifics on the hatchery that I was. It was an amazingly run facility, I believe, especially um, with the constraints that they were put under. And I would say that uh, you really want everybody on board because um, having everybody motivated and being on the same team really makes it succeed. So um, everybody can be doing their best at biosecurity and one breach is all it takes. Uh, so I'd really say having that team spirit of um, everybody's in it together is uh, really encouraging to see and, and that's what I saw there.